The prophets were numerous. The first of them was Adam. The body shall decay until a small piece of the spine is left. A small piece of the tailbone. This piece shall not be eradicated, shall never be eradicated. Even if you cremate the body, it will not be crushed, it will not be devoured by the animals, etc. It was reported that on that day, a rain will fall from the sky, one that is thick like semen, sparse, drops here and there. And then the bodies will start to reconstruct. And around this piece, the body shall grow anew like a plant. And that body starts coming again from that piece until the person is back again. How do you come back? You come back like how you died. And if you lost any body parts during your life, when you come back to life, it will be restored for you. And this reconstruction of the body that I just described to you, that's if the body had decayed. And so if the body decayed, it will be reconstructed and then reunited with its soul and the person will become alive again. And if the body did not decay, it will just be reunited with its soul and the person will become alive again. The very person having the very body he had in this lifetime. The day when the horn is blown and you shall come forth in crowds. It is then when the angel blows his horn the second time that the people will come forth from their graves. And the first one to come up out of his grave will be Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. And when he comes out, he will see that Prophet Musa alayhi salatu wa sallam, Moses is already up. He will be taking hold of one of the legs of the Arsh or pillars of the Arsh. Then the people of Mecca will come forth from their graves and the people of Medina and the people of Al Ta'if. And then the rest of the people will come up out of their graves. <laughs> You have been recreated and brought back to life for our judgment. Just as you were created the first time, naked, barefoot, and uncircumcised. It was reported that the Prophet ﷺ was asked by Aisha, wouldn't the people look at each other's nakedness on that day? He told her no. The matter is too severe for that. On Judgment Day, no one will care about anything but himself. He won't care that you're naked. He won't care at all. And he won't even care about you. And he won't care that he was black, or if you were black, or if you were an Arab, or that he's an Arab. He won't care about any of that. The day when a person would flee from his own brother, his closest of kin, and from his mother and from his father, and from his wife and from his children. For every one of them, there is an affair that concerns him. That means he doesn't care about you at all. The torture of the Day of Judgment is too severe. 
Only if you were friends for the sake of Allah, only if you loved each other for the sake of Allah, you will care about each other. Otherwise, you will hate each other. يَوْمَ تَرَوْنَهَا تَذْهَلُ كُلُّ مُرْضِعَةٍ عَمَّا أَرْضَعَتْ On that day, had you seen it, every nursing woman, if there were a nursing woman on that day, she would abandon her baby. وَتَضَعُ كُلُّ ذَاتِ حَمْلٍ حَمْلَهَا And had there been a pregnant woman, every one of them would have had a miscarriage. وَتَرَى النَّاسَ سُكَارَى وَمَا هُمْ بِسُكَارَى And you would see the people as if they are drunk. But they are not drunk. What's wrong with them? وَلَكِنَّ عَذَابَ اللَّهِ شَدِيدٌ Rather, it is the torture of Allah that is very severe. Who are those who will be clothed on Judgment Day while all of the people are naked? The people who their money was halal. And who are those who will be fed on Judgment Day while all of the people are starving? Those are the people who used to eat the halal. And who are those who shall be riding on Judgment Day while all of the people are standing, those shall be the ones who stood up at night praying. Jaza'an A fitting compensation. Allah Ta'ala will reward you or punish you with something that matches your deed. And before a person even takes a step from his grave, he will be asked about four questions about his knowledge. He will be asked about his money. He will be asked about his body and how did he exhaust it. And he will be asked about his time. How did he spend his time? And every self shall come forth, will come out of its grave, and it shall find there two angels, one named Sa'iq and the other named Shaheed. And these two angels will keep the person from running away. Then the slaves of Allah wa ta'ala will be herded to the mahshar, that's the place of assembly. And it will be so crowded because everyone will be there. Everyone. From the time of Adam until the end of the world. Every single human being who ever lived, all on the same day at the same place. The shins will be mixed together. And even the jinn shall be resurrected, of course. On the day when Allah gathers them all, humans and genies. Ya ma'ashar al-jinni qad istakthartum min al-ins. O ye assemblage of genies, O you genies, you have done much to mankind. A person will be resurrected on Judgment Day and he would see his associate devil. When he encounters, when he meets his Qareen, when he sees that one who was invisible to him all this time in his dunya, he would say, Woe is me, had only there been between you and me the distance between the East and the West. So the people will be herded 
to the place of assembly and it will be crowded and they will be taken to a darkness close to the bridge the bridge that goes to paradise and while they are there Allah wa ta'ala will level the earth the mountains will be flattened and demolished and blown away like particles of cotton and the earth will be flat and Allah Ta'ala will expand the earth it will be stretched out and expanded and then the people will come back from that gathering spot to the earth the now changed earth to experience judgment day when the light of the sun is extinguished and when the stars go dim and when the mountains are moved from their places and when the beasts are herded the animals will be resurrected on judgment day and then they will pay each other back if there were in this lifetime a sheep that did not have horns and it got butt by one that did have horns then on judgment day it will be given horns and it will hit back the one that butted it and then they will both turn to soil and when the oceans are lit ablaze and when the selves are paired when the selves are paired some said it means when the bodies and the souls are reunited some said it means the spouses on judgment day will be reunited you shall see your spouse Yawm al Qiyamah. Some said it means when the good doers are put together and the evil doers are put together. And when the sky is ripped away, torn away, the judgment day is Yawm al Fasl. Yawm al Fasl, the day of segregation. And the believers will be gathered together, and the kuffar will be gathered together, and each nation shall be together. The Muslim nations, the nations of the various prophets, they shall all be together. And the blasphemer nations like the Christians, the nation of Christians, the nation of Jews, and the nations of all the various religions, they shall be together. And on Judgment Day, the believers will be in 120 lines. And 80 of those 120 lines alone are the nation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Two thirds of those lines. So of all the Muslims, from the time of Adam until the end of the world, of all the Muslims, Two thirds of them are from the nation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. And as for the blasphemers, they are much, much, much more than that. Much, much, much more. The vast majority of human beings shall be in hell. Some of them will approach others wondering. And they will say to them, You used to have authority. Is there anything you can do?
So those leaders will say to their followers, you are responsible for yourselves. You are the ones who chose not to be believers. وَمَا كَانَ لَنَا عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ And we had no authority over you to make you believe in kufr. We couldn't force you to believe in kufr. بَلْ كُنْتُمْ قَوْمًا طَاغِينَ Rather, you were transgressing people responsible for yourselves. فَحَقَّ عَلَيْنَا قَوْلُ رَبِّنَا And now, the word of our Lord, which is His promise to torture us, has come true. Indeed, we shall all taste the torture. So yes, we did misguide you. We were misguided. فَإِنَّهُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ فِي الْعَذَابِ مُشْتَرِكُونَ And indeed, on that day, they are all in the torture sharing. فِي يَوْمٍ كَانَ مِقْدَارُهُ خَمْسِينَ أَلْفَ a day whose duration is 50,000 years. This day that's 50,000 years long, it has 50 stations, and each station lasts a thousand years. But that doesn't mean that every single person on Judgment Day is waiting for 50,000 years. That's the length of the day itself, 50,000 years. And that day of judgment is like processing. Processing people into paradise or hell. And the book of deeds shall be placed. And you will see the criminals afraid of what is in it. And they will say, woe is us, what is wrong with this book? This book does not miss anything big or small. And they will find all that they have done present, documented. And your Lord does not wrong anyone. As for who is given his book of deeds in his right hand, then he shall experience an easy presentation of his deeds. His hisab, and here, Hisab means for his deeds to be presented to him. His hisab will be easy. This is the one, the one whose hisab is easy, his, the presentation of his deeds is easy. He's the one who will not be questioned about every single thing that he did. And he will turn to his family happy in the afterlife. He will say, come and read my book. That's because he's happy, and that's because he's a winner on that day. They fulfilled their vows. They fulfilled their obligations. They honored their promises. 
and they feared a day whose calamity and hardship is widespread. وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَى حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينًا وَيَتِيمًا وَأَسِيرًا And they give food despite their desire for it. They give charities though they want to keep those charities, those monies for themselves. And they feed the orphans. And they even feed the non-Muslim prisoner and they treat him well. إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجِهِ اللَّهِ لَا نُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جَزَاءً وَلَا شُكُورًا Those believers say, we only feed you for the sake of Allah. We do not want from you any reward. We do not want from you any thanks. إِنَّا نَخَافُ مِن رَبِّنَا يَوْمًا عَبُوسًا قَمْطَرِيرًا Surely we fear from our Lord a day that itself is frowning and its eyebrows are mashed together. فَوَقَاهُمُ اللَّهُ شَرَّ ذَلِكَ الْيَوْمِ and so Allah will protect them from the evil of that day. And He will give them brightness of beauty and blissful joy. He says, I knew with certitude that I would meet my account, that I would be judged for my deeds. I learned it in the dunya, in the worldly life, and I believed in it. And as for who was given his book of deeds behind his back, that's the kafir who also will get it in his left hand. He will say, woe is me if only I were never given this book. That one who gets his book behind his back and his right hand will be chained to his neck. He will call out for his own destruction. And he will be burned in an inferno. He was in this lifetime with his family happy he used to think that he will not come back indeed he will come back and his lord knew all about him so some people will be happy when they see their book of deeds and others will feel very miserable. And the people will see all of their deeds written in their books. We have two things here, reward and punishment. And this is what the person is going to be facing in the afterlife, reward or punishment for his deeds. Obligations, the recommended voluntary good deeds, and the prohibitions. Whoever was not a believer shall have no obligations recorded, nor have any recommended voluntary good deeds recorded. Rather, on Judgment Day, those people, their good deeds will be like dust on a windy day, as mentioned in the Quran. So what will they have then? All they will have is bad deeds. And as for the believer then, he will find three types of deeds in his book of deeds. 
his obligations, his recommended good deeds, and his sins. And everything else will be erased. And if you repent from a sin before you die, it shall be erased. And among the believers are those who died with their sins confirmed. But Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala will cover their sins for them. Because among the tortures of Judgment Day is that there shall be an angel who calls out exposing the people's sins. But among the slaves of Allah, among the believing slaves of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala are those whose ill deeds will not be exposed. They will be covered. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam said, Man nuqish al hisab uzzib. It means whoever is relentlessly questioned shall be tortured. That means whoever is questioned about every single thing, he shall be tortured in the afterlife. Being questioned means being spoken to. And so Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala shall question the slaves. That means that Allah will make every single one, believer and non-believer, hear his uncreated speech. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَا مِنْكُمْ مِنْ أَحَدٍ إِلَّا سَيُكَلِّمُهُ رَبُّهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ There is not one of you but that his Lord shall speak to him on resurrection day. لَيْسَ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَهُ تَرْجُمَانِ And there shall not be any interpreter to explain to him the speech of God. Allah is the fastest questioner because his speech does not take time. And so Allah will speak to all those creations, millions and millions and millions of creations all at once. And they all hear the same speech that's not a sound. And each one understands something different. He will understand that he was questioned about all of his life. When the good believer hears the speech of Allah, if he could die from happiness, he would die. And the kafir, when he hears the speech of God, if he could die from despair and sadness, Dismay, he would die. But in the afterlife, there's no more death. Death will come in the form of a lamb and be slaughtered. That means no one will die. After that, after we come back to life, no one will die again, nor will there be any sleep. And as for the kafir, he will swear that he did not disbelieve in Allah. Everyone would testify against him. And he would say, I don't suffice with any witness but myself. And then Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala would seal his mouth and then make his skin and his hands and his feet speak. وَتُكَلِّمُنَا أَيْدِيهِمْ وَتَشْهَدُ أَرْجُلُهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ Today, we shall seal their mouths and then their hands shall speak to us and their feet shall testify about the deeds that they were acquiring and then that person's own body parts will tell on him then Allah will enable him to speak again. And then he would say to his own parts, What's wrong with you? And then they would say, Allah, the one who made the speaking things speak, enabled us to speak. 
يومئذ تحدث أخبارها and even the earth will testify on that day on that day the earth will tell its news so the spot where the person disobeyed Allah will say he stood on me here when he did such and such and likewise who did good deeds the earth will testify for him Allah will make the earth itself come to life without giving it a soul and it shall have realization and comprehension and Allah will enable it to speak and it will testify for you or against you may Allah wa ta'ala protect us and even the prophets are questioned on that day but they're not questioned for any sort of reprimand or punishment وَإِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا عِيسَى بِنَ مَرْيَمَ أَأَنْتَ قُلْتَ لِلنَّاسِ اتَّخِذُونِي وَأُمِّيَ إِلَهَيْنِ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ And when Allah says, O oh Jesus, son of Mary, is it true that you said to the people, take me and my mother, both as gods, besides God. Besides. He says, glory is yours, O oh Allah. I would not say what I have no right to say. In kuntu qultuhu faqad alintah. If I said that, O oh Allah, then you know that I said it. The deeds shall be weighed in a real scale. Angels Gabriel and Michael, they are in charge of the weighing of the deeds. Will it be the pages or the books of deeds that shall be weighed? Will it be that the deeds are transformed into bodies and then put into these pans and weighed? Will it be that the people themselves are weighed? Allah Ta'ala knows. If the good deeds outweigh the bad deeds, then the person will be admitted to paradise with no torture. If the bad deeds outweigh the good deeds, then if he's a kafir, that's his only situation. That his bad deeds will outweigh his good deeds. He will be punished in hell. As for the believer, if his bad deeds outweigh his good deeds, then he is under the will of Allah. Wa ta if Allah willed, Allah will punish him. And if Allah willed, Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala will forgive him. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala will allow some of his creations to intercede for others, but not for those who did not believe. Yawma yati ta'wiluhu yakulu alladhina nathuhu min qablu qad jaat rusulu rabbina bilhaq. Those who neglected believing in and preparing for judgment day, they say, indeed the messengers of our Lord have come with the truth. فَهَلْ لَنَا مِنْ شُفَعَاءَ فَيَشْفَعُوا لَنَا So are there for us any intercessors so that they could intercede for us? أَوْ نُرَدُّ فَنَعْمَلَ غَيْرَ الَّذِي كُنَّا نَعْمَلْ Or can we be returned to the earthly life? so that we could do deeds other than those deeds which we did they have failed themselves 
وضل عنهم ما كانوا يفترون. Those idols will be nowhere to be found, and there will be no one to help them. ولا يشفعون إلا لمن يرتضى. They shall not intercede except for those whom God accepts their religion. And so the intercession is for the Muslims, and as for the intercessors, Who is it that shall intercede except by his permission? They can only do so with permission. And so the prophets on that day will intercede for their followers, and angels shall intercede, and the practicing scholars, al-ulama al-amilun, and the martyrs of the battlefield, a martyr of the battlefield will be allowed to intercede for 70 of his relatives, and children shall intercede for their Muslim parents, the intercession is that those creations of Allah Ta'ala will ask Allah to relieve some sinful Muslims from the torture. The sun will draw near the slaves until it is as much as a mile or two away. And so the people will be as if they are melting from the sun, suffering greatly, and they will sweat profusely in accordance with their sins. So some people their sweat will be up to their heels, and some people their sweat will be up to their knees, and some people their sweat will be up to their waists, and some people their sweat will be at the middle of their ear. They have to pick their heads up, lift their faces to not drown in their own sweat. And no one's sweat will mix with anyone else's sweat. And at that time when the sun is so close to the people, there will be some who are shaded in the shade of the ceiling of paradise, which is the largest creation. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam said, There are seven to whom Allah will grant shade. Yawma la dhilla illa dhilluh. On the day when there is no shade but that shade, the just ruler. And a young man who was raised in the worship of his Lord. A man whose heart is attached to the masjid. And two people, two men, literally it says men. And two men who loved each other for the sake of God, who loved each other for the sake of Allah. Their gathering would be for the sake of Allah. Their meeting would be for the sake of Allah. And their dispersal would be for the sake of Allah. And a man who was sought by a woman with social status and beauty. And he said, I will not do it. I fear Allah, Rabbil Alameen, Lord of the Worlds. And a man who gave a charity indiscreetly such that his left side doesn't know what his right side gave. And a man who remembered Allah or mentioned Allah in privacy. There was no one around. And then his eyes flowed. He cried. كانوا قليلا من الليل ما يهجعون. They were sleeping very little during the night. 
busy in worship. And in the wee hours of the night, they were repenting. And concerning their monies, they dedicated a portion to the needy and to the deprived. And that's how they were in this dunya, in this worldly life. Until Allah Ta'ala made them die. And what about those people who are suffering under the heat of the sun? And the sun draws near them. And so the people say to each other, Is there anyone who will intercede for you? And so the people will say to each other, Go to Adam. And so they go to Adam and they say, You are the father of mankind. Allah created you with a special status. And he commanded for the angel to blow into you the noble soul. And he commanded the angels to prostrate to you. Intercede for us to your Lord. Don't you see what we suffer from? Don't you see what has befallen us? So then Adam says to them, Certainly my Lord has unleashed a torture today that he has never unleashed before nor shall he ever unleash again. And indeed, he had once forbidden me from eating from the tree, and I disobeyed him. I am not the one for this intercession. Go to someone else. Go to Noah, your father after your father. And so the people go to Noah, and they say, Oh Noah, you are the first of the messengers sent to the people of the earth after they committed blasphemy. And Allah referred to you as an appreciative slave of his. Intercede for us to your Lord. Don't you see what has befallen us? Don't you see that from which we suffer? And so he says to them, I had an answered supplication, but I used it against my people. I am not the one for this intercession. Go to someone else. Go to Abraham. And so they go to Abraham. Oh, Abraham, you are the prophet of God. You are the one who is most dedicated to his worship. But that means after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Intercede for us to your Lord. Don't you see that from which we suffer? Don't you see what has befallen us? And so he says, I am not the one for this intercession. Go to someone else. Go to Moses. And so they go to Moses. Oh, Moses, you are the messenger of Allah. And Allah selected you for his messages. And he spoke to you from amongst all the humans. That's also besides Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Intercede for us to your Lord. Don't you see that from which we suffer? Don't you see what has befallen us? And so he says, I remember when I killed a person without being commanded to do so. I am not the one for this intercession. Go to someone else. Go to Jesus. And so they go to Jesus and they say, 
Oh Jesus, you are the messenger of Allah and you are his word, the good news that was delivered to his mother Mary and you are that noble soul you spoke to the people as a baby in the cradle intercede for us to your Lord don't you see that from which we suffer and so Jesus says to them I am not the one for this intercession go to someone else go to Muhammad and so they go to Muhammad and they say, Oh Muhammad, you are the messenger of Allah and you are the seal of the prophets and you have been forgiven for all of what has preceded and all of what has come of any sin that you might commit. Intercede for us to your Lord. And so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Ana laha, ana laha. I am the one for this. I am the one for this. And so he goes beneath the Arsh and he falls into prostration. And then Allah inspires him to praise Allah with praises that no one has ever praised God with before. And then it will be said, Ya Muhammad, O oh Muhammad, irfa' rasak, raise your head, sal, and ask tu'ta, and you shall be granted, washfa', intercede to shaffa', and your intercession shall be granted. And so he will raise his head and he will ask Allah wa ta'ala to relieve the Muslims. And because of his intercession, a great number of Muslims will be spared from the torture of the sun. And as for the kafir, he would say, Oh my Lord, relieve me from the torture of the sun, even if it is by putting me in hell. But he does not know the torture of the sun and all the torture of judgment day is the minor torture and that the torture of hell is the greater torture. Muhammad is the last of the prophets and their leader. The most knowledgeable among them, the most beautiful, brave, courageous, and generous. He had the most signs among them and the most outstanding miracles. In miracles. In miracles. In miracles.